my name is Katherine Kelly Lang. And I'm here to do even closer. Oh, Relax wow. Off. See? Like right here? Yeah. Right. Is that good? Can you get a little closer? Even clo Yeah. Are you teasing me now? Or you can bring it to <laughs> I think you're I'm teasing like, me. Put it in your mouth. <laughs> you have to be teasing me because I just got lipstick on the thing. <laughs> Wait, so who am I talking to? All you guys? So, so I promise you personally this is not going to be. <laughs> This is this gonna, is gonna, be, gonna one be one of those. Uh, but tell. it's not. It's not gonna be one of those. It's <laughs> like gonna be. It's flashy. gonna be borderline. You know, we're gonna like. Beep. Oh. Catherine, one more time. Oh. So there we go. Thank you. The IPA. Microphone check. Microphone check. Yes, sir. Microphone check. <laughs> Why don't we do the intro, man? Let's Get do this it. all okay. done. Okay. Let's go. This crazy. is that part of it. Okay, officially. ready, ready, ready. Three, <laughs> two, one. What's, What's your name, name again? again? Oh. Hey, that's that's the music by Jason Charles Miller. We got Greg Serrano. What's up? I'm your host, Kirk Caceres, and we've been graced and blessed with a co-host today. That's gonna be a guest co-host. He's a he's a past guest. Mm -hmm. But now he's going to be a co-host. It's Travis Aaron Wade. Thank you yeah, for being here. Yeah, baby. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you. He's a, he's a friend and a brother. And that's going to lead me into this is this is a very special day. I got to take a drink before I introduce our our special guest. Oh, so, so oh and there up. she's already laughing. So if I have my information right, this beautiful, amazing woman was born and raised in Hollywood. Um, she has multiple daytime Emmy nominations. She's one of the last few remaining original cast members on Bold and the Beautiful. Um, and when I looked her up, she almost has close to 5,000 episodes <laughs> under her belt on Bold and the Beautiful. I yeah? don't believe you. I yeah. thought I had more. Did, well, maybe, that's, maybe they're behind. Um, she's not just an actor, but she's an athlete, entrepreneur. She's a trailblazer. We have here the beautiful, charismatic, always elevating, transcending beyond boundaries, Catherine Kelly Lang. Wow. Thank you That's so good. much. Thank What's you for wait, that wait, intro. Wait, wait. That was really interesting. What's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> and and she doesn't even know. The name of the show is called What's Your Name Again? Be ah. Because it's like, there's many, there's many reasons why. It's because a lot of times, for example, we'll go out some place and someone will see me and like, I know you from somewhere. Where have I seen you? Wait, what's your name again? Or it's about being relevant, like you used to be somebody and you're not. I knew who you were, but Greg here, when I told him about you, what was your what was your response? Yeah, my response is I, I didn't know who you were. I didn't know what your name was. Okay, um, but because, now you know, right? But now I know. <laughs> so well, I was waiting for you to say it. I wanted you to say it yourself. What was it like growing up in, in Hollywood? Because most people now that we meet are transplants. They're from somewhere else. You rarely find somebody that's actually born in Hollywood. And what even makes it more crazy is when, if I have my info right, was your father an Olympian, like a long jump skier? Is that true? Yes. So he how was. does a long jump skier become a long jump skier in Hollywood? Well, <laughs> he lived in Colorado and trained in Steamboat Springs when uh -huh. he was a kid. So he was in the Olympics when he was like 22 years old. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he was very young. Um, and then what brought them to, to LA? Uh, had he had you yet? Were you born yet? No. Okay. No, no, no. I, I was born like three years after that. Got it. Okay. Oh, okay. And I don't know what actually brought him to LA. That's oh, you never got that story? Yeah, that's a good now question. Now you want to look into that? Yeah, I do. That's, I do. That could be interesting to Isn't be. Isn't that weird? I don't know why. So he I met your like, mother out here because she's an actress. My mom out here. She's she was an actress. An actor, yeah. And her father is Charles Lang, who is the best cinematographer of all time. Mm -hmm. He was known to shoot, make all the women look beautiful, like Elizabeth Taylor and Marilyn Monroe, because he did some like it hot wow. he did uh, uh, all Audrey Hepburn movies I mean it just the list goes on and on he has 18 nominations and one Academy Award wow. and he was the best of his time and maybe the best of all and that was her that time. was your grandfather so, yeah that was my so it's funny because our, our, our intern over here Juan when he found out who your mom was he's like oh my gosh she's in my favorite what is it horror movie horror yes. movie of all time what is it's, is it count your yeah <laughs> 
That's amazing. It's like a cult it's film. It's so crazy. random. I've never even heard of it. it like, is, what's your name again she, on that one? People know her from that, which is so bizarre. It was a long, long time ago. And I remember when I was a little kid, she took us to the set. And she wouldn't watch us, let us watch the gory parts, but she just let us watch some scenes that were kind of normal, if there were any. But she just remembers, she said the producer was horribly mean to her all the time. She would cry all the time. And then she just had, you know, blood going down her face <laughs> for the majority of the film with her vampire teeth. You are so, you have such a great energy. Because I was, it was funny because I was looking you yes. up, like all your photos on IMDb. You're so serious. And like, I'm like, whoa, this is going to be rough. She's IMDb, gonna be, she's, those are all like CPS <laughs> photos. You, I know, you and have they to put look like, on my Instagram. Now, I wanted to talk about, <laughs> you know, this show is about, we, I started the show. We started the show. It's to teach actors. Because when I was, because I, I obviously, <laughs> I researched you a little bit because I just wanted to make sure I had some knowledge on you. And so I, I thought I saw that you were, you were an athlete first and then you just kind of segued into the. Well, okay. This is how it started. As a kid, mm-hmm. and I think my first commercial was, I was maybe three years old. I did a diaper commercial or, or two years old, I did a diaper commercial. and You were in the diaper. I was in the diaper. So <laughs> oh, it started when I was a baby. I started doing commercials and print work since so I was you, a baby. So your first job in Hollywood was in your underwear. <laughs> what, yeah. was your motiv- what was your motivation? <laughs> <laughs> and probably topless, too. Her motivation um, was her parents. Yeah, what, <laughs> what was your motivation as that character in diapers? Did you? <laughs> it's just like, let everybody do everything for you. Oh. <laughs> just look so, cute. Yeah, pretty. just like you. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? She probably we all we as probably, babies we probably do think that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Take it, care you're being of me. facetious at first, but that's but are, wait, a as a baby, question. are you actually thinking? Do of course, think? I think subconsciously. Subconsciously, yeah. or we just go off instincts. I think yeah. they just yeah. know instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so diaper commercials. So your parents brought you to this thing. They're like, they're in the business. They're like, okay, we got this gorgeous little kid. We're gonna she's gonna make us money. Well, no. <laughs> Which I, mean, most, I don't know if they were thinking, thinking about. That. But the well, thing is, my mom was a top commercial actress. She did like 250 commercials right, a year. Right, so she already Besides understood. All, right, all the guest starring she did on all TV. you could make it in the industry. And Count Yorg a Vampire. Yeah. <laughs> but she, no, she thought, let's just, I think maybe even they asked, like, do you want your kid to do this diaper commercial? I mean, she would get. But they didn't ask you. No, they didn't ask me. No. <laughs> right. So she put me in that. And then I started doing also commercials with my dad and my stepmom. And we would do like family commercials. So so they'd hire us kind of like as a family. Right. And so I remember doing all those kind of commercials and then print work. And I, I didn't like it when I was a kid. I just thought it was, you know. What, would you, what, would you, what did you want to do time. as a kid? Yeah. I, every time they say, come on, we have to go on at this interview or, or go do this commercial, <laughs> I'd be playing in the dirt with my wheelies. But those are the those no, are the, with my little wheelie. What are wheelies? Yeah. Yeah. Like Hot Wheels. Hot, Hot Wheels. Wheels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just call them wheelies. Yeah. So I used to play in the dirt. I make my tracks. I make my little like garages. And mm-hmm. were you like a little tomboy? I was a tomboy. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Like, just, that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> did you have siblings, or brothers? Or I sisters? did. I okay. had a sister a year older and a brother a year younger. Then I okay. had a stepsister. A year older and his stepbrother a year younger. Oh, wow. So, so like you were like all in the five, middle of there yes. being the tomboy. Now, That's if you were problems. allowed to pick your gender, would you have chosen boy at that point in your life? Um, I did even try quite a few times to pee in the toilet, like a, a boy up. standing up. Yes. I, nice. I, I have to admit, I was obsessed with everything that a boy would do. <laughs> it was kind of frightening. But anyway, That's I, amazing. I, I do sit down now. Yeah. You do. No, we do. <laughs> or, or squat. We love that you feel safe here because this is a, this, this show is about just laying it out there and being raw so people know that we're just real people. Yeah. Hanging out. I sit like, down too, by the way. Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> I don't like the splash. You're lazy. I like to text. <laughs> it's a relaxing, peaceful time. Pick up the magazine. Yeah. That's your med- meditation. That's the one time. Thing. All right, man. We're going to throw it out there. How many guys out there like to sit? <laughs> yeah, sit how many guys? Listen, let's you, just get your responses. It's, 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 it's a quality of peaceful time with yourself. Yes, yeah, right. so everybody it's the who's only listening. time you can be alone. alone and no one bothering, <laughs> no one bothering you. you. So let's have all the <laughs> listeners like write in and how many guys and sit men. You can be pee. anonymous. Yeah. But we want to kind of take a survey. How many guys sit down with a pee and how many women tried to stand up when they pee? That's yeah. one. The only time I'm I stand curious. up. I'm the curious. only time I stand up is when you know outside the car on a tree because that's <laughs> we get to do that. But I I don't like jump outside my car and squat. Right. But when yeah. it comes to my toilet, there's a seat. It's meant to be sat on. I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
That's good information. <laughs> okay. So, okay. I think it's rude to stand up and try so, to hit the mark. <laughs> so we talked about peeing. That's that's amazing. Yeah. And we're gonna segue from your first job was in lingerie. I mean, um, underwear. Diapers. <laughs> diapers. Yes. Was in underwear. And let's fast diapers, forward. Not underwear. Diapers. This, let's fast forward. <laughs> this, now this is freaking amazing. This is what I love. Yeah. We're sitting again with a legend. Honestly, in my opinion, like. Someone that's still in the business, still working, still has got a great attitude. How many years? Well, well, thirty three years on the show. That's on amazing. But even before that, so that's what that's yeah, what but she was. Yeah. But this you've is been what working since you're three. Well, so check this we're out. Not saying no ages, but you're four decades in. <laughs> Dude, she three, guest three starred. Three and a half decades. She three and guest half, starred. Two and a half. I've been two on the show half. longer than, yeah. Most people retire after 20 years. <clears throat> that's the standard. Yeah. That's what we were, that's, that's, that's retire. why, that's the thing. It's like, well, basically the title of this episode, what I wanted to title it so you kind of know the topic is how to sustain longevity, but keep your sanity in this business through, and you've been doing it longer than most people. So she guest starred on Happy Days. Wow. She guest starred on The Fall Guy. Like do you these guys know th- these shows? Yeah. Oh, yes. I would okay, oh, this, listen. The best 80 shows. With the Fall Guy, Magnum yeah. P.I. Yes. I yeah. did yeah. that yes. quite a few times. Yeah. Um, it, uh, oh, so many shows that I don't oh, even remember. Great. What do you mean? Do you um, do we know these? This is what made me? me who I am. <laughs> like, I am who I am because okay, of these shows. Maybe, Alf. I don't even think I... Legend. Alf. See, I you're Asian. You see, Alf? you're like 10 years younger Alf. than us then. Yeah, that's a little little younger than us. Alf is 80s, man. That's a little younger. You're talking 70s. Did you watch First and 10? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, I can't name them all. but like 10 episodes. These were all First and 10. Lonesome Dove. That was a great series. Lonesome Dove. Yeah, House I did the, the series, not the the mini series. Right. Is right, there right. is there a series that was epic for the time when you were coming up in the industry that you were like, God, I wish I would have gotten on that. I wish I could have been on that show and it skipped me. Like CSI was around for eighteen years. I never and wanted to do those you, shows. You never wanted to do those shows. No, it's like a show I, that my for favorite long. show that I did, and I wish that it kept going, but then it got canceled. Was Lonesome Dove because I got to be a tomboy. Basically, <laughs> I got to be would have dirt all over me, like ragged hair. No wonder and, you feel comfortable hanging and, out with all the. And chaps, here. yeah, and yeah. drinking and shooting, and I was a bounty hunter. So that to me, punching guys in the face, that to me was the most fun job. Oh well, speaking <laughs> besides, of which, so I besides think the we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> give her a little sip of um, anyone else. Bra- 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 right? bra- bra- brought to you. We're, we're gonna make a little. Brothers. We're gonna make a little toast. Is this just like the, water with some coloring in it? Ex- exactly, it is. Because that's, that, it's that, set liquid. That's what we do on the set. Th- and that's what we do here, yeah. too. So here we're going to make a little toast. Yeah, do you have to go to work after this? water with coke. You, are you going no, to? No, this is her oh, day off. I can't reach. <laughs> so cheers. cheers. We're, which, we, we love you being here and have, having so much fun with this. That's why I want to do this middle of the episode. We still have so much more to talk about. Oh, my God. But this is... We're this already is, in the middle of the episode? No. We're, no, we're third. No, no, we're okay, third. I haven't even started. And you're having... Talking. Well, you're having fun. You don't want it to end. <laughs> and that's a wrap on this. <laughs> so, so... <laughs> inside back to, joke. Inside joke. Back oh to the happy... Day. Oh, we take a sip on that. Oh, okay. Um, but no, I, I really... So Lonesome Dove. But was there... Ah, was, was there any shows that good. you really um other than that 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 were canceled and were like damn <sighs> i really love you know that what? show actually i think now some of the netflix shows i would love to, to be do. A part i of mean that. i loved breaking bad i yeah. loved like bloodline when that one guy was still alive then he killed him off and then it got bad but yeah. <laughs> true <laughs> there was some there's some shows that i really loved oh i love that one that was about um i can't remember what it was it was about that House uh, Alfred Hitchcock style Haunted Hill. What was that? No. Oh, the Haunted Hill. Was another that was one. a great show. It was really good. Though. But there's some oh, great the, content. The American I mean, like, Horror Story is another one. Yeah, that's really cool too. There's a lot story. of great Netflix shows. There's a, good, a lot of good content. Love. But that's one of the questions we actually ask everybody since we're there right now is if you had your dream. Obviously, it's not soaps. If you had your dream genre type of the play, like I always tell, mine would be. Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. type. If I could make a living doing that, mm-hmm. what is it? Would be your dream? Kurt genre? is a D and D nerd, by the way. <laughs> I think this my is a reminder. what's a D and D? Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons. Oh, I just okay. like like okay. knights and yes. armor and Sorry, dragons. Continue, I've never off. been into that so much. That's a tomboy thing. I like thing. the western. I like I'm more. So the you western. would do western. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so western. that would be your western. dream genre. To Dirty. Do. Yeah. Dirty. Yeah. So you you were yeah. born too late because the westerns came before you. I you should have been no, born a decade earlier. But maybe they'll come earlier. back, you know? I don't know. I, I'm not sure, though. We could, it, it'll be like... <laughs> Deadwood. Elect- Deadwood. They'll Deadwood be straight. like robotic horses and, and, <laughs> and lasers sure, yeah. for... Westworld. 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 Westworld, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Westworld's cool. Yeah, Westworld's, Westworld's cool. cool. So, so I want to go back to those days, the happy days, Fall Guy days. 
How, was the different. business different back then as far as auditioning? Oh, yeah. and so going different. For, like, can you explain so it to be- us? So like, much better. In what way? Well, what would I don't you, know. I that? just, I feel that. More positive? Personal. More, has to be more personal. Well, first of all, Hollywood was, was a little bit more magical because yeah. I think social media ruined that. For, That's what I was going to say. Oh, it just hmm. took everything, any privacy, any yeah. kind of magic, any kind of like, ooh, what's behind that closed door? Agreed, you know, agreed. it's just like. It's all out there in the open. <laughs> yeah. Like, who cares? That's, that's profound. Yeah. It's yeah. horrible. It's, it's, it's technology actually, it's in general. It's taken all the magic out of it. Exactly. And I used to love it back in the 70s and 80s. I always thought it was just so exciting. I loved the way you had to audition. You'd come in. They'd call you back. You'd have a call back for the directors, the producers, the network. You know, all in a room, yes. face to face. Now it's like you put yourself on a piece of, on a tape and uh, whatever. And send it in, yeah. Send it in. And so I just find it... Very impersonal nowadays, and I, the whole process, I don't quite understand how it really works. I love that's I mean. That's a perfect word, and I never, <laughs> never thought about that, was it's very impersonal. Yeah. It's because very I very started, personal. we started here in the 90s, the three of us, mm-hmm. so your point of view of it is even different than ours. And mm-hmm. mine from the 90s is even the same thing. I remember having to, you know, do it the old way, like submit headshots through through snail mail right. and, and put yeah. them in the mail and... And actually, there was the thing called generals where you would go meet with the casting director and just actually sit with them and get to know them right. in their office. And in general, now everything moves so fast because right. of technology. There's, no, generals, there's yeah. no time for anything. It's going so fast. And you go to an audition and there's 40 guys in our category. I don't know about you. How, back then, what was the average you'd say you were auditioning against for like the Happy Days role? Do you even remember like how many girls would be in the room going for that part? I don't remember, but I do remember it was quite a process. Like, because I have the original meeting, then I come back and meet with the producer, then come back and meet with the director, then come back and I think I even had to do scenes with Scott Bayo. Oh wow! Before I, I can't remember. It was like it was quite a process yeah. to get there, and then read for the network, and then you finally get. And hired. he was a big '70s star. Like, and that was just was, for guest starring. He was like, yeah, that's on just every for guest mag- He was on every magazine. He yeah. was on Teen Beat. Scott and all, Bayo. all those. Yeah, I mean, he was huge then. I can tell you don't want to talk about it, but that's okay. <laughs> so let me, let me jump no, in here. I, you know, do, do I you don't know have... him that well. I've just heard some interesting things. So you, you started Bold and Beautiful mm-hmm. when? I started Bold and Beautiful 87. 87. Okay, so what I'm getting to is after you started that, was there at any point did you feel like you wanted to branch out and pull a, I guess in my era would be called a David Caruso? Like well, you're on a hit show, you want to be a movie star. I always just wanted to do movies. I mean, that was my goal. That's what I wanted to do. But then, of course, you have to work, too, right? right. So the show came along. It was the first half an hour show that I was offered anything as a, for a soap opera because I was offered a, quite a few in New York, and I didn't want to move there. It was a half hour back then? It, was ha- it is a half hour. Oh, is it Bold really? Bold and Beautiful. Has it always half been? Hour? Yes. I love, I love that you don't you know. You were on the you show. You did 10 episodes of the show, bro. I don't... <laughs> You don't watch yourself. I don't. I do. Oh, that's no, five no. hours of your life that you thought was ten. I still learn. <laughs> so from when, watching you're, when you're when you're in makeup and me- you're watching yourself on the monitors from sometimes, like old episodes. Yeah. No, I sometimes they Kurt, they play the. You know, you can watch the show in the yeah when you're getting made up and stuff. Kurt, like that. you weren't on ten episodes. You were on one. Uh, <laughs> I did not. You mind, right? It was <laughs> mine. It was Are you sure it was the bone and the beautiful? <laughs> Maybe it was the young and the restless. <laughs> I, I looked it up on that for like 10 episodes. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> you looked up on your IMDb and it came up. No, I you looked it up. You lasted for an hour totally on screen. I've done, I've done everything in the night. And then I, I realized because oh I was on All My Children and it, was, it wasn't it was on my on my IMDb. So I actually wrote IMDb and I said, wait, why is my All My Children off? I, t- I was For a year, I was Kelly Ripa's husband. Oh, wow. I took over for Mark Consuelos. Of course. And the whole thing's not even on there. I was like, so I, I this was like last That's night. Weird. So I typed, I wrote them a note. I was like, hey, you got to put my all my children back on there. I want that credit. Yeah. yeah. You know, Mark, Mark, Mark took them off. Yeah, probably. <laughs> 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 the funny thing is, Mark's the one who actually referred me for the role because he was leaving the show, yeah. and he already knew me. So I want Kurt. I guess he wanted someone. He trusted you. Yeah. Yeah. Trusted there's, there's no way <laughs> Kelly's going to be into this dude. Yeah. So I'll go. <laughs> he looks he was too much alike. <laughs> exactly. Actually, I want to speak of that. Someone, a little birdie in this room, told me that you've had, at some work days, 80 pages? 
Jesus, that's insane. My, the most I had in one day was 90 pages. But it's oh. a half hour show. That's but, the whole yeah, show. Could you have 90 pages? Because there's less talk. characters, and the characters that are on the show work way more than the characters that work on that show. So you're filming show. multiple so, episodes in a day. I shoot like, like I've been <clears throat> shooting 10 episodes a week. So that's, you, I remember uh, now. Okay. I remember but now. Our week, our week goes from Tuesday to Friday, and then we have one week off every month. So that's well, why we double up. It's a tough life, yeah. So, so yeah, what is your tough. process? But I never stop working. What is that process for you? Because for the young actors, that's um, a big scary thing, and that's a lot of. Patience. I'm. I've always had a pretty good memory, so it mm-hmm. came a little easier. But still, it took the first two years. I remember were really hard. Yeah. And there was just like so much dialogue all the time. Um, but after that, it got easier. You get to know, got to know the show, the rhythm of the show. Of course, all the characters and the people you're working with, and it became easier and. You're, it's kind of like working out in a gym. It's like your muscles. It's a muscle memory. The more exactly. you but do you work have it, like, the better it goes. Do you so. have a specific way? Like I, I know a few people on the West Wing, and they had like a way. Like Rob Lowe had a way to memorize his lines because Sorkin's so specific. No. That he would like, there was a certain way that he would, I, he would do it. You just look at it. And I read it. That's it. Sometimes, even after I read it a couple times, I kind of know certain scenes. Of course, monologues you really have to learn. Yeah. And I just have to... Just be repetitive, go over and over and over. I ask my honey to run lines with me. He plays all the other characters, so it does help to run lines with somebody. I used to use a recording where I would play, I would say all the lines that weren't mine and then leave the space for the lines that were mine Mm -hmm. and then just do it that way myself. But then that became too much work, too. I mean, that's a whole different machine than any other (laughs) acting that exists. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, theater could have a lot of lines, but you get months to rehearse. Right. Film and TV, you don't even have that. This is a totally different thing. Uh, As I know, I I remember getting scripts, you got to work tomorrow. And even if I'd have 30 pages, I'd been like, what? And and I remember I I told this in another episode, the Kelly Ripa story. It was when I was on the show with her. Her first year on the Regis and Kelly show was my year on All My Children. I remember she'd come to work in the morning after being on Regis Kelly. She'd open her dressing room. You know how they throw the scripts under the door. She'd say she'd open the dressing room and there'd be like fifteen scripts. And she'd say, "Kurt, what's the date?" And she'd be like looking for them and she'd pick one up and she'd just go like this and flip through the pages real quick. All right, I'm ready. Let's go. <gasps> like that quick. I was like, "How do you?" But like you just, I'm going back to muscle memory. It's like the gym. Your brain is a muscle. So if you're working out all the time, you don't get sore. But if you don't work out and all of a sudden you go to the gym, you're going to get the sore. Just like uh, memorizing lines. If you're not constantly practicing actors out there, constantly practicing your craft and being an actor, whatever, auditioning, you're going to get rusty. Mm -hmm. You always have to be consistently doing it. Whether you're auditioning, going to a class, reading with your friends, whatever, you've always got to be practicing. This is an art. And it is a craft, and it's a career, so you got to make it one. Yeah, and I love it. Going back to you asking, like, what did I really want to do? I'm so happy that I'm still on a soap opera, and I'm so happy that I had the opportunity <clears throat> to be on the show. And, yeah, in the first, like, four years, I think I was like, oh, but I want to do this, I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And it was harder to get out in the beginning. But through the years, I've had been able to get out and do movies and other TV and get out, and we've created, a couple, like, all these fashion lines <laughs> now. And so I'm doing all this other stuff. So to me... Having the bold and the beautiful and then like it's actually given me a life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's given me because it's it, it plays in a hundred countries. I don't know if you guys know that. Yeah. So in a hundred yeah. countries, about thirty six million people watch it every single day. That is crazy. And you're and in some countries you're just like big, super and it's huge. Superstar. Yeah, it's yeah. nighttime yeah. shows yeah. in other countries yeah. and is one of them it's like one of the main show. Is Italy you know. one or yeah, Italy is huge. And we're gonna Aust- get to Australia that because there's a business that you have that's a that's yeah, Italian but I'm saying based. like it all yeah. came from bold and, beautiful. bold and beautiful, from you know the world knowing about the show, knowing about my character and me, and then I've been able to go and do a lot of other movies, TV, thing, and uh, fashion. And overseas. at that point, it's you really amazing. are family. Whereas like, you know, yeah, I do I do a movie or a TV is. show, and people are like, we're like family. And yeah, you're like I've known you for like a month. I don't, I don't understand how that. <laughs> but works. then you have to say goodbye. Like, That's yeah. the thing. Is the bold and the beautiful. You must really I mean, a family. This, is, I mean, this has been your life. And a your, lot of the people, people behind the scenes. A lot of the characters, original actors, have gone. I mean, it's just John McCook who plays Eric Forrester and me. But most of the people behind the scenes are original. Are now, Eric wow. Forrester, wh- how what's his relation to you? Because you're Brooke Forrester. Well, he is 
my father-in-law, but I'm confused because he's been my husband on a number of occasions, and he's also the father of two of my children. So, Creepy. But, cur- but currently, he's my father-in-law. You know, you have child trauma from when you're your yeah. first kid in a diaper. Yeah. And, <laughs> it's just and so happy so, days. Like, when you start your career. Wait, your father-in-law was your husband? Don't, don't, yes, don't, don't yes, do it. Don't yes. do it. Yeah, don't he's do it. When husband. you start your I, career I in a diaper, it's yeah. you're going on the wrong trajectory. It's, I, yeah, I want to ask yeah, you about Skate Town. What was yeah. that like? Skate Town was my first film. I okay. was 17 years old, and I was so nervous and so excited mm. at the same time. But I was so nervous that my voice went like this, and I, like, my chest was so tight, and I couldn't get out the lines. I swear, that is exactly how I sounded. I said, I'm crazy. And they cut my, <laughs> most of my dialogue, which was really sad. But they cut a lot of my scenes. I played Patrick Swayze's sister. That was yeah. like one of his first films as well. And I was the love interest in the film. And Patrick would fight for to take care of his little sister with this guy, the other main star of the show. But they had everybody, like every 80 star in that movie. Yeah. It was so much fun to be on the set. But I just movie. remember I was petrified. It was I'm so, so glad you brought that. I want to piggyback on what you just said. Thank you. So in the audition, obviously, you didn't... Right. You didn't do that. So you right. were composed and you got yeah. the job. Yeah. But then when you went on set for Actors Watching, <laughs> she nailed the audition. She yeah. swooned the room. They hired her, blah, blah. But it's not over yet. You got to show up to set, which is a whole different monster. I think, I think the pressure was finally really on. Exactly. Like, I never felt any pressure. I never even thought anything was going to happen. And then all of a sudden, there I am on the set of this, you know, at that time, it was Raystar Productions, mm-hmm. which was, I mean, it was a big production. Yeah. Good memory you know? for that. That was yeah. it. <laughs> It's a big paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> but so for actors watching, great. when you get on set, it's it's for your first, when you're not used to it, it's, I, I can admit, my first few times, I was super nervous. They're all of a sudden, right, one rehearsal, boom, okay, rolling, boom. And this, there's a crew of 50 people, cameras are all over you, everyone's watching you, and you're on. Yeah. And all of a sudden, your mind just shuts down. Yeah. And, you, and then we, we've all kind of probably had one experience like that, maybe not. I mean, yeah. not Greg, because this guy is like, I, I mean, it would make sense. Composed. Really? <laughs> You've never have been like that? A little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I keep my shit together pretty much. Okay. Kind, of, kind of being born and raised and going to Beverly Hills High was meeting famous people ever, like, distracting for you on set. Like, Patrick Swayze. I mean, it was his first film, so not then. But right. Like, he was known his, as a ballet dancer Exactly. Then. But is there anybody nice that you got on set and went, oh, my God, I'm so nervous because I'm working with this individual? Or is it, if you were born in Beverly Hills, so you're like, nah. Honestly, no. Uh, The only time I felt like I was, like, in awe and, like, such a huge fan was when I met, well, I'll start with the story first. I met a party. It was a very Hollywood kind of party. And this was probably about 15 years ago, I want to say, or 20 years ago. And this girl comes up to me. She's like, oh, my gosh. I'm so nice to meet you. We wake up every morning and watch The Bold and the Beautiful. I'm like, that's weird. You wake up and you watch. The first thing you do is watch The Bold and the Beautiful. It comes on at 1230 every day. I'm like, who are these people and what do they do? She's like, me and my, me and my boyfriend watch every day right when we wake up. I'm like, okay, that's cool. She's like, and she started talking about my character and doing this and that. She's like, and she's like, I really want you to meet my boyfriend. She's like, and I said, okay, great. Take me over there. And so. She takes me over to him. He turns around, and it's Robert De Niro. And I was no. just like, oh, my favorite actor of all time. And I they mean, wake up at 1230? <laughs> well, then I thought that was so weird. I said, of course, Robert De Niro <laughs> makes sense. But I couldn't talk. I was just like. So she was starstruck uh, on you, and then you were yeah, starstruck on, yeah. her, on her boyfriend. And I, she had no idea that you know he was my favorite actor of all time, and I just couldn't even talk. I was like, uh, 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 so that was another that was experience. That. No, so at what, what point was he at in, in his career? Like, what did he had done? Like, he had already oh done. Oh my god, so it was like fifteen years ago. Bro, everything. he's already fucking Robert like, De Niro. Yeah, like, you don't know, there's different yeah. stages of no, Robert no. De Niro. You no, know? Yeah, but amazing what, what, what year was Taxi Driver? Seventy-two. I mean, but she said this was like fifteen years ago. Yeah, and you said it was a typical Hollywood party for everybody watching what honestly is that? Li- what is that what is that there were like actors i i it's funny because i don't cocaine, we know cocaine we know but <laughs> well, there's it was more remember, like cocaine was audience. more in the 80s no i don't know that was more there's 80s. still you cocaine tell us, out there you tell us what's the hollywood party <laughs> like it all depends I on hollywood who's because it. it was like a after party of a premiere kind of thing so mm-hmm. it was actors and things like that and 
um, just production people. Got it. So, na- so names. So people in, so the, names, in the industry. But that's the in only industry person. Party. And everybody I looking really at each other, knew. seeing who's there. And yeah. who, who can they see? So you can see De Niro see and what I happens? Know, I hate those parties. Yes. But that was the only thing yeah. I remember was <laughs> Robert De Niro. Right. You see him. He I sees just, you. I couldn't see. And what happens? Well, he was like, oh, yeah, like, he knew me and, like, very nice to meet and you. But he, he, he watches his girlfriend, the already, exactly, they already knew you. I he love that. He already knew you. Yeah. weird. You were so famous. He had a little he, connection yeah, he with went, you. Yeah. He went like this. He went, I know you. I know you. Yes, I see you. Of course. The first I'm thing I do when type. I wake up every morning no. is I look at I you. No. The girlfriend already <laughs> said, my boyfriend and I watch you every day. Hey. We don't so? know about you. So can you, so wait, De Niro was a little into you. Do you realize that Robert De Niro was starstruck by you? Yeah, you he was your fan. I mean, oh my I gosh, I'm gonna bow down to you right now. I know now. she was. But <laughs> she already told you he was. You should have signed. You should have signed. His just, chest. This is amazing. <laughs> okay, Robert De Niro. I, I should have, right? Just come up and just uh, just give us a shout out and yeah. just 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 say yeah. Bob, yeah. she's here. Catherine was hot. Yeah, I'm I telling her. you, he's my, my favorite morning. actor ever since I exactly. can remember. Exactly. I mean, I think and everybody kind of admires a lot about him. So yeah. so 12:30 every day. So since we're on that about that. Since you've done that show for so many years, I mean, it's like like anyone who's had a job. It's a job for so many years. Yeah. It gets to the point where a lot of times people are job and they just clock in. They go through the motions. How did you keep this job and this character fresh. from being monotonous and fresh? fresh? Not only for you, but for the audience. And, like, I, I got to admit, I mean, I've... Give the like, real answer, Catherine, please. Yeah, Catherine. Honestly, it's I've called done work. Some, <laughs> it's like it's putting work. in 110 percent. It's work, and but like, there's got to. Whether well, some okay, days where you're like, okay, first of all, I love it. Yes, okay, love it. I love the show. I yeah. love my character. Yeah, I love it. Like, if you you have to love what you do to want to work at it and make it better all the time. So thank God I do, and thank God I want to keep trying. You know, different things, trying to you know, breathe life into the character, into the part. And sometimes you get a script and it's like, what There's what What do I do with this? And How comfortable you do you to... feel with, since you've been there so long, with the writers saying, no, 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 can well, we change this? No, my what I think our job is, mm-hmm. I think our job is to get the script, read it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> memorize it, know our lines really well, and do the best we can with what we have. Even to this day, yeah. you've been on so long, you, you usually wouldn't I've say anything. I've had, uh, you know, I've had things that I've recommended or said, can mm-hmm. we, or maybe can we change and this? And as you guys or... heard, she recommends. She doesn't tell. No. Because you, you see some it's actors who are like, job, I'm not doing this. I think they no. would do this. Let's do you this. You know what? Those people I, do not work anymore. No, Especially they don't. Hollywood doesn't put up with that exactly. crap anymore. All right. Thank so you. this is like you, an asterisk right and, here. Job, job people stability. Listening. Job yes. stability. Your job is to do what the other person asked you to do. That's it. That's your job. Unless you want to produce. You're a director's actor. That's awesome. Yeah. And technically, yeah. you're an employee still yeah. of, of producers and the network and the show right and but you seem like after all these years that you didn't get to your head that you still were flexible you took the words you made them yours now do you think it was the writing that kept it from being monotonous and fresh or was it you just kind of creating new ideas and new ways you could take her like i think both of mm -hmm. course i mean i can't even imagine the stress of writing a daily show yeah. for this long. Yeah. You know, that's a huge job. And most of our writers have been around for, you know, <clears throat> for as long as I can remember. Yes. So, and we don't have that many, maybe four, and they rotate scripts, yeah. four or five. And I was on their 10 but episodes. Screw you guys. It's amazing. <laughs> I mean, what they do and the ideas they have to come up with. Oh, my God. Wait, I still need to know about your storyline. But you Listen, man, have we're gonna to. We're going to Google this, man. You guys can just Google. <laughs> Kirk is on. You guys Bold don't and believe beautiful. he was on there? Yeah. And, he was, well, and, well, and, and he was Kelly Ripa's assistant. <laughs> yeah. <that's right. laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's why the, all my children's not on there either. I'm like, I can't even believe IMDb anymore. Yeah. They don't have my credits Something's right. What's going on. Exactly. This, this could all be in your dreams. It I'm is. not really an actor. It's like a scene I'm, from the Joker. I'm, pre- I'm like acting. From the Joker. I'm pretending I'm an actor. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. You don't want to be locked in this room with me if I'm the Joker. Yeah, no, yeah. So I'm sorry. We interrupted you talking uh, about the writers. There's four of them that rotate. It's, it's a big job. Mm-hmm. You know, they rotate. And I think it's a collaborative <laughs> effort with everybody. And I'm not even just saying the actors and the writers. It's everybody the directors the crew people that you know we all have to be there working together and making it a fluid motion yeah. and and uh, a nice and the crew is so machine. awesome like some and of those guys and girls oh have been God. there for like yeah. 50 years yeah, and they're like yeah. these little guys how would you know you you know, know, one episode. <laughs> it's 
great. <laughs> and then you you take. Wait, you gotta put. You have yeah. to pull out the clips and then. Well, so I'm gonna have to put on. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> insert. We're gonna if insert. If there are clips, <laughs> we're gonna insert <laughs> clips of Kurt. We're gonna find one with us on the show. On there now, um, another little birdie that same, told me about the same thing about the pages said. Is this right that you do you technically have the most episodes ever of any soap actor at this point yet? Or are you still working on that? Like I might be close to being the most. I don't know. If someone that whispered that in my ear, but I don't know if that's true. I couldn't find I'm the info cl- because the number one. Well, that's was, Gin- that's Guinness Book. No, but it was Susan Lucci because she was on that show for forty five years. All my children, which or, IMDb doesn't say I was on. But yeah. she was on there. Yeah. So I'm up there somewhere. With You're getting close. And I'm, yeah, only 30. So are you like Catherine, Tom Brady, like Catherine. trying to break the records? Like Catherine, still going? Do you, do I like you, breaking records. Exactly. Yeah. Do you honestly not know? No, I honestly do you don't honestly know. don't know? How many You don't know how I've close done? you are? No, I don't. How close you are? She's I mean, that to me is not like the person. first thing on this my brain. Mo- like <laughs> This is the most shocking <laughs> interview ever. You should wake you up the every most day humble. and have like a calendar that you... You're incredible. I'm almost there. You're, You're kidding. Incredible, what is that? <laughs> listen, no, you, you don't listen. have the calendar? You guys. Because look, when people start getting closer to breaking records... Yeah, that's a record. Of course. You're within like... You're talking about... You're talking about... You're within a few of a... Thousands, <laughs> tens of thousands. It's a big deal. <laughs> really? You're, yeah, it is. Yes. Know. Look at her. You're, you're, oh, you you're so cute. You're playing so naive. You know, know. Deep down, she's had well, 432 yeah. more episodes. Like, okay. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm that's only six more months. I, I don't know. look at that as something like I have to pay attention to every single well, day. Well, one but. of the things we talked about previously was that, you know, as is in production, I would look at that as, as, you know, we talked about, do you look at social media? Do you look at that for hiring someone? I would look at hiring you based upon those numbers that you were steady, that you worked that long, that you you were that reliable, and that a show kept you around. I'd be like, this person obviously is a joy to be around. And I'd want to hire you based on that. So oh. those those stats are important. I heard you did a reality show. Oh. <laughs> I did. I'm like, I'm not a person that likes reality shows, so to speak. But now, I how, did. first of all, yeah, before we get into I what it was, a- how were you approached? Uh, I did just, they just say, hey, you want to do this? And you're I like, sign me up? I did, because it's Australia. So I got They're off. like, it's in the jungle. I and you're like, I get to wear a diaper, I'm in? No, okay. <laughs> I did like the idea that it was in the jungle. And I got to play in the dirt. <laughs> That's all okay? nice. And That's wear all a is. diaper. <laughs> oh, God. That's what it is. <laughs> but anyway, it was, it was, it was hard. First of all, the Survival hardest, show? What was it? Yeah, Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. That's cool. So they take the you jungle. and they drop you with 12 strangers in a, this camp that you can't leave in the middle of South Africa. and Legit. You knew nothing. No, I knew nothing. And you didn't okay. know they the 12 bl- people. Actually, they even blindfold you when you get, leave Johannesburg and you're driving there. They blindfold you because they don't want to, you to see where you're going or have any idea where you are. So two and a half hour drive later, they drop me in this middle of this jungle with 12 strangers from Australia, and they're crazy. You know, the Australian, they oh, have such a crazy sense of humor. Yeah. So it's an Australian show. So they hire Australians, but I was the only international No. Actor. Now, do you get a backpack, or you and just go me. empty-handed? You get a backpack with, like, a mm. canteen, They a pack it for you, or you get to bring your own stuff? No. You, you brought they, your makeup, right? No. You, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. What are you no talking makeup. about? No makeup. No makeup. You don't even... I, okay, I was so upset I couldn't bring my own creams. I love it, face same cream, creams. Exactly. So that was upsetting to me. I said, I said, I can't take my own creams. <laughs> but so they gave me this weird cream and weird soap that was, that could, you could wash it off in the stream. You know, it has to be all biodegradable. It's made everything. from elephant mm-hmm. saliva. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever. That's and amazing. my sc- my skin and hair is still trying to come back from that. Mm-hmm. But um, it was, the, f- the part of surviving was okay. It was just having to talk to 12 strangers 24 7 and that reminds me of going to the bathroom Mm. and closing the door because that's the only piece you have even though you have like you know the microphone here around your neck all the day the battery pack but you go in there you shut the door and it's like oh thank god no cameras (laughs) nobody can see me or talk to me or you're like get me out of here why did i agree to this oh my gosh in there doing my meditation and my mantras and trying to like visualize some kind of happiness because it was um it was it was tough so what's the goal of the show then you get dropped off do you have to get to like point 
B from point A to point you B. You have like, to get the audience to love you basically because they vote for you. They vote mm. for you to have challenges and the challenges are really disgusting like eating <clears throat> bugs or snakes or, you know, all that stuff or the physical challenges. Like you Now, were there other celebrities in different groups around at different locations or you were just the only no, one? No, they're all celebrities or different like fo- two football guys, footy guys were in there. Um, the talk show hosts, uh, a model, you know, so there were different. Yeah, because I saw online, like, tons of your fans were so upset when you got kicked off. They yeah. were, like, going nuts. They don't like, understand why I got kicked off. Exactly, yeah. yeah they, they took that personal. Tell them, tell them why. Tell I, d- tell I honestly why. don't know why. Because you said What down. was their reason? Do you know why? <laughs> I'm going to go watch the show tonight. Well, I was, and I go was find so it upset. Somewhere. Actually, it surprised me because I didn't think I was going to get kicked off. And then when they called my name... I was kind of like, I was really disappointed, but then it, when it hit me, I just like, I started crying because I thought, oh, this is so stupid. I'm never going to cry on a reality show. You know, these people are so fake. <laughs> As you start crying. Oh, <laughs> you are right fake now. at a reality and then show. Oh. I actually started crying on this reality crying show. Right now. <laughs> Can we get her a Kleenex, please? Intern one. She's, get, she's having flashbacks. I am story. having Sorry. flashbacks. It was the most embarrassing oh. thing because I'm like, what is happening to me right now? Was it's it like, because? I was having an out of body experience. Was it because it was, you knew your own? camera and that part of it you were like i opened myself up to this like. well once because i thought of that and i thought i was embarrassed by the whole thing honestly i felt like oh i'm a terrible person because i didn't give these people what they wanted uh, to see uh, the little birdie because, handed me some kleenex oh my god here it's on camera right there. <laughs> the little bergy the little bergy <laughs> okay i feel better now thank you <laughs> wait i need a sip of this Oh, there we go. Cheers. Let's cheers. do it. Cheers. 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 That. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. I'm so glad you're partaking How do you guys do that? in our festivities. <laughs> It's Tuesday. <laughs> it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, but it's Thursday, <laughs> but it's Tuesday for some it's, people. It's a day with so a now we, we Anyway, I have to finish by saying they oh, were the please. most marvelous people ever. I thank God. Oh, they okay. were not mean people. It's just I'm not a talkative person, and here I am doing it. So that talkative. means you want to come but, back on their next show. <laughs> is this not incredible to the listeners? She's not a talkative <laughs> no, person. I'm not a talkative person. Yet she just <laughs> spends her whole career saying words. <laughs> You know what's Does so that cute? make any well, sense? But they're not her It words. is weird because I was super shy as well. And that's what happened. Well, that's what the little film. birdie told super me before shy. you came. So this she is said, when you're going to come back because now we have an, an entire three <laughs> other episodes about you, your character. I'm just going to just interject super mm-hmm. quick. You, your personality is completely different than what I have ever would have from expected. Her, from her IMDb picture. Really? <laughs> Are you guys? Going I, off I, I didn't even IMDb look you up. Listen, I'm Who the guy. Looks on IMDb? Instagram. No, Instagram. listen, I'm I'm the guy on the show that like the, I'm number one. I'm I'm the super cynical. Uh, yes. Two, I don't I don't fall into the category of you know fandom. Um, so I am the like person that says. Really, what's your this name This is again? the guy who's had major success in so, his life. He's been regular to many shows. Not major success, but yeah, he I stands mean, when whatever. he pees. But anyway, he's, he's humble. Back to Catherine. Um, your personality is has completely changed my mind. I am impressed, I think is the one word I want to use. <laughs> change your mind in what um, concept? What now he's going to wake about, up at 1230 wait, every day I'm, and I'm watch the show. I want, I want to know, I want to know her, about her. I want to know more about, about her and stars, people like actors. her. Okay, well, my character on Bold and Beautiful is not really like me. It's very different. Mm. But yeah, I've never seen the show. It has nothing to do with but that. But now he's okay. going to set his alarm like, um, to make sure he watches, watches it every day. At noon with yeah. De Niro. Yeah. I'm gonna with his girlfriend. With, with him and De Niro, we're going to watch him it. him and De Niro. <laughs> At noon. So, okay, we've been talking about reality TV, your career as a kid in a diaper, the bold and the beautiful for 30 plus years. Let's talk about, do you, was there a time in your life where you were, because we've all gone through dark periods. Was there a time in your life where you went through a dark period and you found a way out and that actually opened yourself up to heal and change yourself and change your perspective of where you're going to go, what direction you're going to go to, whether it was a bad relationship, bad marriage, I mean, I've had a few bad relationships that have actually opened my eyes. I'm still working on it, but have opened my eyes to what I need to do to myself and my well, career and where I'm going. that's why you had those experiences. Yeah. I mean, I believe that you draw those into your life in order to learn from. There you, you go. Know? And so instead of people saying, oh, poor me, this, why is this happening to me? It's like, why did I, why, why did this gravitate yes. towards me? It's obviously something that... I need to learn absolutely with myself or grow from or maybe it is a, maybe it is a bad situation nice. and it is and I have been through those and but I, I always look at it more like 
what is the lesson that you here? need to learn? It's not about I need them. To learn. It's yeah. what you need yeah, to learn. And did totally you learn that lesson believe. and grow from it and overcome it? Yeah, sometimes I question like what really was the lesson, but you have to still be open even in years later, it may come to you. But you know, there's always something that you learn from and grow from in every experience that you choose to go through in life. Mm -hmm. So that's why I choose not the boring easy road. I like yes. to I like to have those lessons. Well, I yeah, like the, the boring easy road is and boring, yeah, easy, and monotonous. Yeah, life yeah. is about grabbing as much yeah. as we can and taking advantage of every experience right. because there's it's limitless what we can do mm -hmm. you know it's like uh, like i was like a few months ago i didn't know i was gonna sit, be sitting here doing this podcast and it's just been blowing up and like, i would never thought that and it's like exciting we're all having yeah. fun everyone's coming together you have to think people, outside guests the box. are coming here telling great stories yeah. and here to help people and and you never know what's going to happen if you think outside the box right and initiate stuff and because anything is possible i exactly. swear i believe that anything is possible and doing those and then because I, I did iron man and mm -hmm. i mm. finished the iron man race and then yeah I did the, a lot oh of you did all three, all three but that kind of taught me it's like okay it's obviously all in your mind because those crazy mileage the miles you do in training for those crazy races so you it's are like, an athlete still yeah you when was when did you do the, the iron well the last iron man i did was last year in south africa i did the 70.3 world and championship how, what was your training for that what did you do training for that uh, well, that okay. So then I did the year before. I did the full Ironman in Kona, which is the one you see wow. always on TV. So I did the World Championship full Ironman. This woman's a beast. Uh, but the training, when you train for the full, you have to say no to everything. And my life is too busy now with the businesses yeah. and everything going on and work. That's I, your life. Is I training. can't say no to that. So when I did train for that, it was just a little more simple. It was like bold and beautiful. And training. <laughs> Have you ever done but, the Malibu triathlon? Yeah, maybe. I used times. to do the celebrity. Many oh, times. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's where we met. We oh, might have been yeah. on the same team. Maybe. I don't know. I did the Malibu triathlon tons of times. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, so no, funny. It's no episode. But that's a. That's yeah, no, I have no, I've never done. I did that. In my life. I'm fact, not an actor. That's what made me want to do the Ironman race because yeah. I did that and I got on the podium and I'm like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. And I quickly trained up to do half Ironman and then yeah. the year later the full Ironman. So. Well, I need to. I need to start closing this up because I keep talking to you and your eyes are so mesmerizing. Literally, like <laughs> I don't know it. how actors act across from me. I forget my lines. <laughs> If I had to look, look at you up. for three hours, I'd be like, wow. So, sweet. so here, no, eyes honestly, must be your thing because look. you said that about the the blue eyed girl you worked with. That's they, all they you can remember. Actually, Travis, I told that about <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> well, I, it's I, a saying. I, eyes I was are actually windows the same. To the soul. So I'll give, I'll give him that. I'll give him that much. Eyes are windows to the soul, and that's yeah, why these guys. She does have a looking way. So the thing is, is this has been amazing. Is I want to get one last thing from you to the actors and musicians and entertainers watching. What is one major thing that you would want to tell people if you could just have your voice heard, like that you could give advice to people that are just starting or in the business that are struggling? Like, should they continue? Honestly, should they continue? Should they quit? Should they look for something else? Should they follow their dream? Or should they actually accept reality and think this is a tough business? I mean, do you really want to do this? Oh, this is so hard to say. Exactly. Because I mean like Greg is a pessimist. He's always like, get out. Yeah, no, and I'm like, the answer is don't say, start. The answer is don't start. I wouldn't start. say that to anybody. Y you are one in a billion. Well, it's true. It's true. It, it's so. a tough market. Exactly. But so what if would you, you tell? have a dream and nothing is going to stop you, I mean, it has to be a serious dream. you got to go with it. Sure. And, just keep going until and keep you going. don't make it. And mm -hmm. But, and, and, but if you want to be practical, definitely, you know, look mm -hmm. on the sidelines for other things and other passions that you might have exactly. and have two jobs at the same time, that kind of thing. And, and just go for it. Always and keep, keep your mind open you never for know. other things. If you have, you can never know. You just never know. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You, you never know. And I believe you have to stay true to yourself. Do not try to be somebody you're not because that will never work and you'll never get anywhere. Just be Absolutely. true to That's yourself. That's great, great advice. Yeah, and and follow your dream and just believe in it 100%. And if that's really what makes you happy and what you want to do, I say go for and it. And that is like the end, the last line. Can you give us one of those last looks that we do on soap as you say that last line? Like to the camera? That's right here. Oh, what do I say? <laughs> you know when we have to say the last line on camera and then like we're just doing and it's, uh, what is the line? It's like that. Which, what the last line she just said, you just have to look and the camera kind of dials in on you. And yeah, we stare off. And they go into commercial. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't seriously do this. And this yeah. outro Thank music you, is by Jason Charles Miller. <laughs>
Thank it's you. been a pleasure to have Travis Aaron Wade here, being a co My dude, co-host, yes. I love this dude, man. No, he's I'm so great excited, energy. man. You gonna be here next time? I'm, I'll be here in a few hours. Yeah. My, my, <laughs> right, my, my, my brother, friend, family. Cohort. My, my cohort, Greg Serrano. What's up? I'm Goodbye. the host, Kirk Caceres, right here. This is the show, What's Your Name Again? And we have been blessed and graced to have Catherine Kelly Lang here with us. It's been such an amazing interview, beyond what I expected. I love you, Me little too. birdie. Thank you for bringing here. <laughs> little little <laughs> birdie. birdie. Like, well, I love her. She's just the best. Anyway, Catherine, you're amazing. Thank you. Aw, thank you, guys. Thanks for, thanks for playing. We'll have you again. And maybe someday when you have another empty day or free day, you come co-host with us and we'll talk to somebody else. I would love to. Okay. Thank you. Nice. Good night, everybody. Good night. Take care. Bye.